Number 16 then for 10 marks here in this specimen paper. Here we've got a summation, but in part A it simply says, even though it looks very much like your proof by induction, it just says prove that this is the case. It doesn't actually specify that you have to do it by induction. If it did say prove by induction, you would have to do it that way. But the chances are, as soon as you saw that with the summation sign in this, you would just say, right, a proof by induction is the right number of marks, five marks, so you would probably just launch into that. And fair enough. So you would start off by saying, what happens at n equals one? Is it true for n equals one? Strangely, in the marking scheme, they've got that down round about the fourth mark. But of course, if it wasn't true for n equals one, you wouldn't need to proceed any further. So at n equals one, you'd have this. The left-hand side, since there's two sides to this, would be, if you're only going as far as one, you'll only get as far as one over one times one plus one, which is a half. The right-hand side comes to one over one plus one, which is a half. Lots of writing, yes. So left-hand side equals right-hand right side. So true for n equals one. And yes, you have to go through all of that to get the first mark. Now, state the inductive hypothesis. Assume. Assume it's true. Usually miss out writing it, so you just say assume true for n equals some arbitrary number k. If that were the case, then the summation from 1 to k of 1 over r, r plus 1, should give you k over k plus 1. I'll just call that 1, this being the inductive hypothesis. You have to call that into play or it's not a proof by induction. That's not worth a mark on its own. The next mark's given with that in conjunction with then just considering what happens. Consider n equals k plus 1. You can't say prove true for n equals k plus 1. You're just considering if this were true, what happens here? Well, when n is k plus 1, the expression will read r equals 1 to k plus 1 of the term. And you don't write equals and then k plus 1's over here. You now just have to consider what this could be equal to. Well, that would just be the summation of the first k terms plus one more, the term at k plus one. So that will just be the summation of r equals one to k of that general term, plus the remaining, the very last term that you took it to, which is a term where r is going up to k plus one. So it'll say one over and r will be k plus one. So this part will be k plus one plus one. Now, these two together give you the next mark. Now you're on your own. You just have to try and tidy this up. You know what you're aiming for. You want this expression in the end to look like this, only with a k plus 1 over a k plus 1 plus 1. Well, you call in the inductive hypothesis. You're saying that this should equal that. So k over k plus 1 for this part will add on to, and this part is k plus 1, and that part is k plus 2. So I'll put using one, mean, meaning I've called in my inductive hypothesis. Now, getting the ball rolling there gives you the third mark. But the next mark doesn't come until you've tidied up. Well, there's not an awful lot to do there. You've got two fractions which you can add into one fraction. That part's got all of the denominator already. This needs to be multiplied by k upon 2. So it's k times k upon 2 over that. So that now means I've got multiplying it out k squared plus 2k plus 1 over k plus 1 k plus 2. I'm running out of room, I'll just put the factorisation at the side, that factorises nicely to k plus 1 times, I know it's k plus 1 squared but I'll just leave it like that so you can see the bit cancelling out. So those two parts cancel, and this just goes down to k plus 1 over k plus 2. But write it in the required form, which would be k plus 1 over, and k plus 2 is just k plus 1 plus 1. 
Now, getting as far as that gives you the fourth mark. You have to get into the required form. I might even say that equals required form for n equals k plus 1. Then the final mark is just going through all of that. What did you just do? You just showed that if it was true here, you just showed if it was true for n equals k, sometimes you don't put the f in, maybe I should put it in. If true for n equals k, you've just proved, well then it's certainly true for n equals k plus 1. So that's a stepping stone being established there. If it's true at any one point, it's true for the next. But you know it's true at n equals 1. So since it's true, okay, you'll put the it's in, put it in if you like. Since true for n equals 1, that means it's true for 2, and it's true for 2, it's true for 3, etc. Since true for n equals 1, that means by induction, I might put that in. By induction, it's, but you can just say true, and it's for all n, I'll just use the abbreviation, for all n, and it said positive integers, which are, of course, the natural numbers. And that big statement there gives you the fifth mark. It takes a lot of writing doing it in a proof by induction way, and I didn't say use a proof by induction, but at least you know what you're doing when you're doing that. Now, there is another way this could have been done, which was the first way that was shown in the marking scheme, but you probably would have just used a proof by induction. There was another way, which is just to take this at face value and see what you can do with it. So you might just have started off by saying, well, what does that look like if I write it down, just going through the first few of them? That's 1 over 1 times 2, and then plus 1 over 2 times 3, plus 1 over 3 times 4, plus 1 over 4 times 5, and so on. And of course, the handy thing here is those numbers are the same beside each other. So if there was only some way of multiplying the equation or manipulating the equation so that those could pair off and be subtracted in some way, which is almost the same as saying, well, if you could split them into a separate 1 and a 2 and a 2 and a 3, which is the same as saying, well, here's a fraction, what about splitting that fraction? So I'll do that. 1 over r, r plus 1, can be split into a over r plus b over r plus 1. Now, realising that you can do that as a strategy got you the first mark. Just saying, let's split it up. Which you'd probably realise if you'd written this bit out. Yeah, so what have you got? That means you've got a times r plus 1 plus b times r, just multiplying everything by r, r plus 1, should equal 1 couple of values. If r is 0, then a is 1. That's quite handy. Now the critical bit. If r is negative 1, and you want things to disappear, then if r is negative 1, a disappears, but you've got negative b is 1, and that's just ideal, isn't it? b is negative 1. You're going to have negative terms, which means, although first of all, getting those two numbers was a mark, So what you've actually got for s of n is this then. You've got the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1 over r minus, whatever it was, 1 over r plus 1. So writing that out now will change this. These all, now you've split up these denominators. So that would be for the first bit, you've got 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2, that was the first evaluation, plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. Generally what you do with these is you then just put and so on in the middle and put down not just the last term but also the term before it. So it should finish with r equal to n, which would be 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. So the one before it should have been 1 over 1 less, n minus 1, plus 1 over oh, n. Oh, that should be minus. Now, writing that out gets you a mark. Now, there's actually two marks to the answer, but the answer is just going to be because all these terms disappear. It's just going that to be this minus that. If you wrote that as minus 1 upon n, you're blind.
But that's the fifth mark. The fourth mark, it says, is for noticing that successive terms cancel out. But of course you've noticed that. You didn't notice that just like once. rearranging those brackets into a different order. I don't know if I'd have done that. I'm no, probably you'd just have gone to plus. this for the last part, which is one, and then the all cancelling pairs, apart from the very first one and the very last one, over n plus one, and I'll put in bracket, I'll put afterwards then, as terms cancel in pairs. And I'll justify that strategy. Now I'm just going to tidy that up. So put them both over n plus one, and that's just one of them, but that will be n plus one, lots of them. So that means finally, Sn equals, tidy that up, n over n plus one for the fifth mark. There's a wee note in the marking scheme that this type of series that you've got here, where all these terms in the middle just cancel out, so the two ends just telescope in, is called a telescopic series. B, part one then. Find the least value of n such that the difference between the sum of the first n one terms minus the sum of the first n terms is less than a thousand. Now there are three marks allocated to this. We could either use the formula, putting down this. S of n plus one would just be putting n plus ones into that. So that means n plus one over n plus one plus one, which is that. Take away s of n, so that's just what it says, n over n plus 1. That is less than a 1,000. Doing that, according to them, gets a mark. Now I have to tidy that lot up. Well, I've got fractions there, so just multiply everything by these three denominators. In which case, this will have to get multiplied by the 1,000 and that. And that also get multiplied by the 1,000, so just put the 1,000 at the front of this then. So it's a 1,000 of n plus 1 squared minus n times n plus 2 is less than, and the side will just be the n plus 2 n plus 1. Now the next mark doesn't come until I've tidied this all up into a little quadratic. So I've got 1,000 times, and that's n squared plus 2n plus 1, minus an n squared and minus a 2n, so they've all gone apart from the 1, is less than, and that's n squared plus 3n plus 2. This all just goes down to 1, so this side's just a 1,000. So bringing that 1,000 over and subtracting makes that minus 998. I'll just write it this way around. n squared plus 3n minus 998 has to be, reading it that way now, greater than 0. That's worth a mark. But you could just have said this to get to the same result. The difference between the sum of the first n plus 1 terms and the first n terms is just the extra term. It's just the term u n plus 1. In other words, that term has to be less than a 1,000. And that term would be this term. It would be 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2. That'd have to be less than a 1,000. So I presume that could have stolen that first mark. And tidying that up, of course, is much easier than this. Because I'll just do my cross multiply now, or invert them, I'll just cross multiply. So I've got n squared plus 3n plus 2 is greater than, and that will be over this side, 1,000. In which case, n squared plus 3n minus 998 is greater than 0. So that would have been easier. But now you've got to figure out n. Now, if that was to factorise, that would be nice. And if it did factorise, it would be multiply to give 998 with a difference of 3, which means the two numbers are pretty close together. So they must be around about the square root of this. And that's about 1,000. The square root of 1,000 is about 31. So you're looking at numbers round about 31 there. But it isn't exact. So instead of that, you might just decide, well, let's just do the equal to zero part of it. And since it doesn't factorise, we'll just use the formula. For it to equal zero, n would be, so just use the formula, negative three plus or minus the square root of, and that'll be nine minus four times this. But it's a negative, so plus four times nine, nine, eight, all over two. And I didn't put plus or minus, 
because I don't want the negative answer if n's meant to be a positive number. And put an into calculator gives you n should be 30.126 and so on to make it equal to zero, which means that n would have to be, in fact, what you've suspected all along, 31. And that's the third mark. Now for the last two marks, it's got this. Find the value of n for which the product of these sums equals this particular sum. Oh, well, well, s of n is just that, n over n plus 1. So s of n minus 1 will be n minus 1 over, and 1 more than it will just be n. And s of n minus 2 will be n minus 2 over it. But over what? 1 more than it, so it's n minus 1. And s of n minus 8 will be n minus 8 over. Over what? One more than it. N minus 7. Doing that gets a mark. Oh well. No, lots of these parts cancel out. The n's cancel, the n minus 1's cancel, so you're just left with this. N minus 2 over n plus 1 is this over this. We'll just show that cancelling. So that would cancel with that, that would cancel with that. So I'll just cross multiply now. So n minus 2 times n minus 7 equals n minus 8 times n plus 1. So n squared minus 9 plus 14 equals n squared minus 7 n minus 8. The n squareds cancel. I'll bring the n's over to this side but read it this way. So that'll give me plus 9 which is 2n to write over here. So that'll go over to here then to read 22 which I'll write on that side. So n equals 11 and that's the mark. The last mark.